congratulations you guys on if anything happens i love 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 the film it's an animated film that invokes magical realism yet it also comes with a social political twist absolutely it's got and ours i always thought is like it just deals with this huge human issue of grief and we can all feel the grief we're all feeling in this moment and in so many ways and also the deeper thing is like no one ever wants to experience losing a child in a school shooting i mean that would be the you know that that is such an awful end of life and also in a place where you know education is so important and it's supposed to be so safe yeah but but it's weaved in really really well um take us from the very beginning mr will you're a writer producer director whose credits include toy story 4 and mr michael you're also a writer actor director and a playwright how did you guys combine your creative forces to come up with a powerful, if anything happens, I love you? Let's begin with you, Will. Well, we um, actually met in an acting class in North Hollywood and we became friends and we're just fellow writers who are on the path and we would meet for coffee and talk about what we were working on. And the original idea for this came from Michael's brain and soul, which was sort of these shadows that sort of encompass the spirit and the souls of these um, parents. And then it just sort of happened organically where, you know, we kept reading the papers every day and this tra ongoing tragedy of, of children dying at the hands of um, grief and of gun violence. And we just felt like we wanted to make this sort of uh, animated short film that was an elegy for parents who have lost um, children to gun violence. So it really just happened organically where we cobbled a couple of ideas together. I'm a huge fan of Michael's, of his acting and his writing, and he knows a lot about animation. And I learned a lot about animation from working at Pixar for a couple of years. So it was really sort of an organic sort of artistic journey. And um, we have a great producer, Marianne Garger, who worked at DreamWorks Forever. And Gary Gilbert is one of our producers who produced La La Land. And we just had this really incredible team. All, the film is all animated by women. And we're really, really proud of it. And we can't wait to show it to the world. Yeah. Do you, do you agree with that, Mr. Michael? Absolutely. I mean, uh, Will and I's partnership, it just, just kind of like, it started with two friends who, you know, met in an acting class. And then from there, it's just like, he was a writer. We always would talk about writing and working together and, and creating something. And it was just this wonderful um, organic thing. And we just kept talking and kicking around ideas like you do with your friends. And um, then we just started to build it. And it's been an incredible journey because um, I think everyone has been so moved by the script, by the film, that everyone just keeps joining the team. And so we were so wonderful. We got Marianne, we got Gary Gilbert, and um, we met our, uh, our director of animation. She just gra had graduated from uh, Cal Arts, and um, she is, her name is Young No, and she is amazing. And she instantly got hired and she is working on a feature film by uh, Jamie Foxx that Marianne Garger is producing. So it's like, so we've, had, we've assembled this wonderful team around us that are all kind of like skyrocketing in wonderful ways. And then of course you also have the producer, Laura Dern, right? Yeah. Laura Dern, absolutely, yeah, Will. Yeah, I mean, Laura has been such an advocate of the, the film and, and we were so grateful that she and her partner, Jamie Lemons, came on board. I mean, you know, Laura won the Oscar last year and, um, you know, I've known her for years and have been such a big fan. And she's very involved with uh, Every Town for Gun Safety, who's a partner of ours on the film. And um, she just came onto the movie and it's been so positive and encouraging, and supportive. And it's, it's great to have someone who's, um, you know, t she's like an acting legend to us and a, a, such a force in the, in the industry. And to have someone like that in your corner, because we're a little movie, means a lot yeah yeah it, is, it was just overwhelming like when she said she watched the film first off i was already shocked that like she was going to watch the movie much less like i want it i want to executive produce it how can i help you and she has just been a wonderful champion and has has uh helped so many uh, uh given us the momentum to have more people see it and more people you know and her champion of it is just amazing so yeah, yeah. thank you laura Dern, if you're watching thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> well let's talk about the structure of the, i love the structure of the film so the film where the shadows serve as our storytellers pretty much how did you come up with that yeah the, the shadows are sort of like the shadows are sort of souls they're vehicles for the the feelings that the the human beings can't summon because they're in so much pain so they sort of act as these spirit guides for the people who can't communicate with one another. 
And then of course their sort of spirit shadows are reunited with the daughter and she's able to bring their souls back together so the parents can be there for one another uh, to grieve, which is the most important thing I think one can do in the grief process is just show up for the person who's in pain. I did, I, I mean, you guys made me cry even. Oh. <laughs> At like midnight last Thank night when I was watching, I'm like, ah! Thank um, you. So I'm from Palm Springs and, I, and you guys were here just, I mean, you guys are fresh from Palm Springs, right? Yeah, yeah, we were just we just were at Palm Springs. I think it was like two weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, so it was just there, and obviously we, it was virtual this year. But we would have all been there and loved to have been there live. But we we're so proud to be part of the Palm Springs uh, Film Festival. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the thing. I mean, you know, all the festivals now are, are are all virtual. But in a way, it gives you more global viewing, right? You get more viewers. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think more people are seeing it. And also you're connecting with filmmakers in a different way. Like I never would have had like, there's like Facebook groups and Zoom meetings with other filmmakers. And so you're having this a little more intimate connection as opposed to maybe just standing around with someone having a little snack and chatting. So it's, it's pretty unique. Um, so how important is it that this film is at the Heartland Film Festival? Uh, we are... Oh, through the moon that it's at the Heartland Film Festival. It was one of our, our, our ones we wanted to get into. We were so happy about it. Um, and they're making do just like it's going to be, you know, virtual as well. And also they're going to have an, um, a drive-in movie theater screening of it. So that's super exciting. So you actually can go and see the film. I never, when we, we created this film, I never thought it would be in a drive-in theater. Yeah. But now it is. So it's like there's some weird excitement about this moment, you know. We're thrilled. We are thrilled. It's such a premier festival and it's one we really, really wanted and we're completely honored and um, we couldn't be more flattered to be a part of it. I am an Indiana boy at heart. That's why I, su I, I support the Heartland Film Festival. Plus there's a bunch, I was there last year, there's a bunch of Academy Award qualifying films. I met the, the filmmaker for uh, St. Saint Louis Superman. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, so I, it's amazing. Um, so going back to the topic of gun control it's back in the news nowadays with the nra saying pretty much that the ar-15 is harmless and it's no more dangerous than the musket thoughts on that you know the as 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 filmmakers in this movie we really wanted to approach this subject matter uh through grief and to you know i think one thing that we can all agree on is that um parents should not bury their kids. You know, it should go the other way around. So there was sort of a proverb that we sort of had tacked on our bulletin board, which is, you know, uh, when your, your parents die, you bury them in the, in the ground. And when your kids die, you bury them in your heart. So I know that everyone has their own views on gun control. And, um, you know, we're partnered with Every Town for Gun Safety. But for us as filmmakers and an artist, we really want to approach the subject matter through grief and through loss and that this was our way of talking about this issue through these souls, through these parents, through grief. Absolutely, as far as like the creation of the film is like, we're trying to tackle like, I think the, the, the greater issue of grief and what this looks like after, you know, and what this devastation does. Because a lot of times I think when, when the news shifts to these other things, a lot of the humans get lost in this moment. And we don't really go, oh my gosh, those families from, four years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, are still grieving and these huge wounds are still there. And I think this is a film for them to say, no, no, we actually see that pain and we know it won't go away and we can't fix it, but we can acknowledge that it's still there and we as a community can grieve with you. How long did it take you guys to make the film? Gosh, I can't even, Michael, when did we, when did we begin production? We began production Production, production into animation. We began animation in April of 2019. Mm -hmm. And then we finished. And then we finished in uh, roughly early this year. We got into final mix, sound done out of post production. We got out of post production right about February of 2020. Wow. But as far as script development and um, that stuff, it was probably about a two year process total. Yeah. Wow. Maybe two and a half. Maybe it's out in the open. Yeah. We are so happy. We just, we are so happy. And we thank you so much for watching it. Um, we've had, we've had such wonderful experiences with people watching it. We, we held an event at UTA and um, we invited all these survivors of gun violence. And one of the things that was 
this might be the high water mark for me because they came up to me, these survivors, this woman, Brenda, and these other women, and they said, thank you so much for creating this film. We feel seen. And it was just like, oh my gosh, because like, this is who this is for. You know, we're, we're, we're not tackling, this is who this is for. It's for these people and drivers. Yeah. And, and it was so touching and wonderful to have this experience. Oh, well, thank you so much, you guys. That's amazing. Again, congrats on everything. Good luck on everything. Right. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. This is so I, fun. By the way, I love your jacket. Like, I'm obsessed yeah. with your jacket. Like, I'm just like, it just, it man. Matches, it matches. I know. That's, at first, I was like, <laughs> when I first saw it, I'm like, did you get a jacket made with our, you know, background? Then I'm like, oh, no, no, it's different, but it's really nice. Wow. Wow. Thank you. 